Hello and welcome to a new episode of Coding Coffee. Today, materialize that front end. We're going to do something about our front door, let's say. And what better way to do that in a t shirt about my front end as a coffee person, caffeine dealer? I just got that test from my in nos and it's just perfect for registering this episode but let's go back and have a look where we ended up i'm afraid to say already a few months back so when you're on python anywhere you kind of have to remind yourself of the doing this um, run until unfortunately let us reload the website before we have a look at it um, and then you're good to go again for three months. And I, it's more or less three months ago since I actually um, worked on this. So you see, we still have this very simple form here to get a name. Um, and then um, set a password, supposedly, right? Um, so this part, we already can capture data now um, and in the future we'll do more fun data. data. Something. We just want to make this look a little bit nice. So when you're making a website, you don't have to trouble yourself too much. There are front ends that um, help you work with this. In the website that I'm working on, in parallel, in parallel. Seem to have been going wrong with the audio. The audio engineer has been sacked. In any case, here I was just kind of making some publicity for my coffee logging website where you can also buy freshly roasted and so, and coffee. So for this. with myself because this is these kind of sessions I try to go through through it in okay how do you find the information when you want to do something and uh, get it implemented quickly so materialize a modern responsive front-end framework based on material design those are kind of the principles developed. Let's now go and see where we can get into these things. Here we find this kind of a CDN, which would be um, where you can So let's go again to our files. The next thing to go to is let's just have a look at our um, application. Um, and here you can see a template is rendered and we had to form HTML. This one should be living in our templates we can open this and then basically this is what we kind of already saw here this body which is this section now when you want to use something externally and you have this kind of CSS's and unified JavaScript things like this we just want to kind of copy this The buttons here now apparently not not on this one this kind of css so css it 
the header. So let's give that a try. All right. And perfectly yes okay so the header is basically giving instructions to the the browser for might want to run styling then it might want to apply um, if you remember from last time we have this kind of symbol here to reload so whenever you make a change sure to first save it and then reload it. And I don't know, I don't actually think anything will have changed. Um, well, okay, that's okay. But there you go, things have changed. Um, you see the, the styles are being directly applied. The reason I wasn't absolutely sure was Data to it, but uh, clearly this is already working out of the box. This might end up being quite a short tutorial, but let's look to the other kind of options. So npm is if in your backend you're actually also programming with JavaScript, then you would usually or you could go to npm. Power is also something to pack all your CSS and JavaScript files, but we're kind of going for this. Just requires us to copy paste that. So they're also kind of talking about how you would set it up. Again, this is really if you're hosting that locally. So you're basically downloading the materialized CSS. And you would have your index.html and then in parallel with this directory. And now they go to the HTML setup because you saw you could just copy paste it into that header. And this is very similar to what we're actually seeing here. So they have the doc type HTML, uh, which I haven't included. Um, that's just, you know, most browsers don't really check that. but Let's just completely align it now. And so we have those fonts. You see they're also using the CDN here. Let browser no website is optimized for mobile. That's something we do also actually want. So we can further that went. Okay. And we're basically depending on this framework to make it look good anywhere. So on a desktop or on a browser. So then they have the body. Um, I have one more link, which is the font link. All right, this we didn't have when we were actually So their difference is that the CSS, sorry, the JavaScript, so for the dynamic kind of renderings, they put that on the bottom here to optimize, um, you know, the loading. Because as it's loading, and if you have it there in the front, it without having scripts the browser might have or might require a bit of time digesting it basically so let's just now save this again reload and right still reloading and then let's just 
Okay, this is just a tiny, tiny thing seems to have changed, probably because of those fonts that we now also added. Let's have a further look. This is what we just did now is a very basic setup because we don't have any screen um, but it is already already using we're actually having this demo here this but we can also just have a look at the page source and see what extra kind of things are in here so for example they have that map bar here the navigation bar let's give our websites which is quite empty at present let's give it navigation bar all right so we're here in the body and we're just copying that navigation bar it's not going to be functional of course um i imagine this in the direction of google if anything else and then we're back here and you see here we go if we would have logo for between two cracks it could come here and if we have navigation bar links it would go bit of a pity that this is just really taking all the space there's no margins anything there without consulting just try a small trick and that's putting an extra division here in which our content can sit so this is how you really write these html tags you always have a And reload. All right, almost there. And then we have another look. But we didn't really tell it to um, let's have another look. Now this this here looks quite nice, right? So. This is probably sitting in a main division. Difference from how I was doing it. So let's copy the two divisions and here, right? So we're now sitting within two divisions. Let's do this. So we have to. Close the inner one. There we go. Oops. There we go. We haven't really changed our content, but we definitely made it look more beautiful. So when We'll be collecting more interesting data. We're in a very good starting position now. Now, the final thing I want to do is I want to go back to our Python Anywhere dashboards. If you recall from last times, you can go to console, a terminal, and indirect one on one with the computer. So our repository was sitting here. We can ask, you know, actually, what were we doing last? You know, we were coding the coffee episode four. So I guess we're already at it. Three, two, one. Um, we haven't been working with branches. So if I now ask git branch, it will basically say a branch is basically when you're working on something. Things you can you might branch out into different directions, work it out, and have those things be independent from each other until you're sure 
that they match and you can merge them again. It's especially important if you're working with different people on the same project. Uh, but as I was building this up for these tutorials, I kind of kept it all on one branch and episode by episode, we're kind of just expanding a little bit. We can always, working on this one branch, go back a few commits if that would be necessary, if there would have been an error that's left in or something like this. But we can also, now you will see we made some changes to our form, right? So this is indicated here. Now we can also make a new branch. You do this with checkout. Now checkout you can do on a branch that's already existing. But we do it on this one. We call it episode 5 on the right. So when you've changed files, it will just, you know, it will just take the modified files, create this kind of new branch where you now can commit things to. So we'll just commit what we had. So dash A for all the files that have been changed, which in this case is just the templates form. Now including the materialize CSS and we're saying material, materialize CSS included. There we go. All right. So I will push this. You can just do actually origin, but now it will complain because we need to set it upstream so that it's also in the general repository. I hope you learned how to set up a front end for your note taking apps or any other kind of web applications you would like to develop. Thanks for following this tutorial and happy coding and coffee. See you next time.